Divi Nation, thank you for joining us in this live stream. Today we'll show you how to turn the Divi blog module into a draggable uh, swipe carousel uh, with Divi and Slick. And we'll also use the interior design layout pack to base our style off. And if you haven't checked out Elegant Themes yet, and if you're not a member yet, make sure that you check out one of the links in the description below. And without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so let's start off by taking a quick look at um, what we'll do within this live stream tutorial. I want to say hi to everyone um, on YouTube and on Facebook. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you leave a comment. I'll be checking on the comments frequently just to see if you guys have any questions. Um, and I'm happy to see you guys here. All right, so let's get started. Now, um, I've installed the uh, interior design blog page layout. So if you go to elegantthemes.com slash layout, and if you search for interior design, you will see all of the layouts that come with this layout pack. And I've chosen the blog page um, to use throughout this tutorial. So if uh, you haven't gotten a um, blog page ready yet, go ahead and create a new page and use this particular layout. Um, and then we'll start creating the draggable swipe carousel. So this is an advanced carousel that we'll create using Divi and Slick. And let's take a quick look at the outcomes. So over here we have a, a normal block page going on, and this is the block module that we're using inside it. Now um, we're going to transform this into the following outcome. Uh, we have this draggable swipe carousel going on and we have two arrows, a previous and a next arrow. And if I click on it, it uh, goes back and forth and you can also drag this to the next item. And on mobile devices, you can also swipe. So this is what you can expect on a uh, smaller screen sizes over here. We only have one item showing up. The arrows work the same way, but you can also swipe in between them and it gives this kind of very smooth effect. And the uh, blog posts that are shared are dynamic. So they are pulled from the blog module itself, um, which really gives you freedom to play around with the design options without actually worrying about the modules, um, the actual blog posts that are going to show up because you can just set that inside of the blog module itself. You can choose which categories show up um, and you'll have all of the information dynamically displayed on your page. So this is an awesome design and we'll get started with it by uh, enabling the visual builder at the top of uh, our blog page. Also want to mention that um, you can find a link to the blog post in the description below and over there you can find everything written step by step um, and we'll also use a tiny bit of code and you'll be able to grab that code there as well instead of having to read it off the screen. Um, so that is convenient as well. All right, so the first part of this tutorial, um, before starting with uh, the Slick integration, so if you guys haven't checked out Slick, um, the JavaScript library, definitely do. I've mentioned it in the blog post as well, but you can just go to Google and type in Slick um, JS and it will lead you to their uh, library and it's for free. You can use it on any kind of website you build and it um, integrates really well with Divi. So you have a lot of design possibilities and a lot of um, functionality included. So you can determine for yourself how your carousel looks like and you don't have to pay for an extra plugin, which is great. Um, all right. So the first thing we'll focus on is creating the arrows. So the previous and the next arrows over here are made using Divi's blur module. And uh, we're going to assign that to our carousel later on, but we'll start by creating those. So I'm going to add a new row to the top of my second section over here. And let me just drag it and place it over here at the top. And before um, adding any modules, I'm going to open the row settings. And as you can notice over here, it kind of touches the right side of our screen. And to do that, we're just going to modify the sizing settings of our row. So we're going to let it touch both sides of um, the section container by adding 100% to both the wicks width and max width. All right, and now we can add our blurb module. 
So I'm just going to add a blurb over here. And over here, we're going to remove the contents in the content box, but we are going to use a title and this will say previous, but you can really choose what kind of copy you want to go on there. You can also just use the blurb module for its icon if you don't want to put previous or next there, um, but it definitely helps um, users navigate through the carousel if you put some copy there as well. And then we'll go to the image and icon settings over here. We're going to use one of Divi's built-in icons. Um, we'll just pick an arrow, but again, you're free to use anything you want, or you can use other modules as well, honestly. You can design it however you want, just make it clear that it's gonna be something people use to navigate through the carousel. All right, over here in the image and icon settings, I'm gonna make some changes. Let me grab those color codes really quick and add them over there. All right. So we're using a black icon color. Uh, we're also using a circle icon uh, with this color code. Um, we'll place the image at the top. So the icon at the top and we'll use center icon alignment. And then in the title text settings, we're going to match this to the interior design uh, layout pack. And to do that, we'll just have to change the title font over here. We'll use Mulai, a semi-bold uh, font weight. We'll place this to center and a black text color. And then we'll go to the sizing settings. And over here, we're going to modify the width across different screen sizes to keep that responsive look and feel. Let me just grab those really quick. So we're using 10% width on desktop, 20% on tablet and 30% on phone. So these are responsive values that I've tested out and made sure that look good across different screen sizes. And we'll also place the module alignment to right to make sure that it touches the right side of our row container. Now, the last thing we'll need to do over here within the advanced tab, which is very important, um, is adding a CSS class. And later on the tutorial, we'll use the CSS class to place this particular arrow um, as a previous function inside the slick carousel. So this is really important. Make sure that you add this CSS class. Um, if you decide to use other CSS classes within your code, that's fine. But if you wanna make sure that everything works with the code that's provided within the blog post, make sure that you place back button here. And we're also going to change um, the cursor of um, our entire module. So we'll make sure that people, like if I go over here, if I hover this, uh, you can see a pointer show up. So to enable that, we'll just add one line of uh, CSS code to the blurb module's main element. And it just says cursor is pointer. So this will just help us achieve that. All right, so once we've completed the first arrow, we can clone the entire row and place the duplicate at the end of our section. So right below the block module. So now we have one at the top and at the bottom and we'll make a bit of tweaks to this. So obviously we'll want to have a arrow that goes to the next blog post as well. Um, and to do that, we're going to change the title to next. And then we'll go to the icon settings and we'll modify the arrow. And last but not least, we're also going to modify the CSS class. So this will definitely need to contain another CSS class. Um, so the slick carousel later on knows where uh, to add the functionality of the previous and next um, slide within the carousel. So over here, I'm just gonna replace back with next. So this one contains the CSS class uh, next. All right. Now we can start turning our block module into the carousel. 
Let me just refresh what we have up until now. And then I'll just take a quick look at the comment section as well, just to see if you guys are following along and if you have any questions so far. I see people are following along. I don't see any questions yet, but we haven't gotten to the magic yet. So let's get to that, right? All right, so before we modify uh, the block module itself, which we'll definitely need to do, uh, we're first going to open the row settings of um, the container that contains the block module. And what we'll do over here within the sizing settings of our row is make sure that um, it touches both the left and the right side of our section container. Uh, over here in the preview, you can notice that it's a kind of a full width experience with some blog posts cutting off on the left and the right side. And that goes best with a full width uh, design. So you can definitely play around with these sizing settings as well, but it really works well with uh, a full width row. So that's why we'll change this to 100% to the width and the max width. And this, you can already see it on the screen. This will allow the entire row to take up the entire width of the section container and uh, touch both sides of the screen. Now, another important part um, of the preparations for uh, the carousel is going to the visibility settings of our row. And over here, we'll put the horizontal and vertical overflow to hidden. So both of them need to be hidden. And this will just make sure that no horizontal scroll bar appears uh, within our design. So obviously, a carousel will have many items lined up horizontally. And just to make sure that uh, that kind of scrolling is removed, we'll place um, the overflows to hidden. All right, and now we can open the block module. So over here, um, the first thing we'll do is remove the pagination within the element settings because we'll have this kind of endless carousel going on anyway, determined by uh, the uh, number of posts that you want to show. Over here we have 15, you can change that into whatever kind of number you want. And now in the design tab, we'll put this to full width and this will just help us give more control over our block module and the way it works so now everything's lined up uh, vertically and the sl slick carousel will be able to um you know identify each one of the blog posts within uh, the automatic carousel and place them next to each other. So that's also a very important part. And let me just add an overlay over here as well. This is just purely aesthetically pleasing. Something that I added in the tutorial. And we'll also go to the advanced tab over here and we'll add a CSS class called block module. Again, you can find um, everything in the blog post as well, which is listed in the description below. If you want to change the CSS classes, go ahead, you're free to do so. Uh, but make sure that you change it in the code afterwards as well. All right. And over here, we'll also add just a little bit margin, bottom margin over here to the meta of our blog posts just to create a little bit of white space there, but this is also just for aesthetic purposes. All right, so now we're ready to turn this into a carousel. And to do that, we're going to use a block, uh, a code module, I'm sorry. Um, and we'll place this anywhere on our page. You're free to do so. Uh, you can place it in any kind of row as long as it is there and it's functional. So the first uh, thing we'll need to add over here is um, the slick library. So to do that, we'll need some script tags and I'll just add it over here. So we've added it to the body of our page contents. The reason why we've added it to the page is um, because we want it to be applied on uh, this particular page only. If you add it to the head of your website, it'll be loaded. Uh, sidewide. If you want to avoid that, you can just add it to um, a code module instead. But if you're planning to use the slick library throughout your entire website, feel free to place it in the head as well. All right, the next thing we're going to do is add 
just a tiny bit of CSS code and this will just help us style the different uh, blog posts, dynamic blog posts individually. So this is really important to float left and we'll also create a bit of space between one and the other blog post by adding some margin. Uh, we're using two VW, VW uh, equals the viewport width, and this will just help us keep it responsive across different screen sizes. All right. And last but not least, we'll also add the jQuery code. Let me grab it. If you're not familiar with Slick yet, it is a very powerful um, library that provides you with a ton of options. Um, and you can modify these kind of options to uh, decide how many slides show up, how many slides um, you know, are scrolled through when pressing a button. So over here, we have only one. And we're showing three at the same time. As you can notice over here, so one, two, three. The left and the right side don't count. Um, each time we s click on something or we just swipe or drag the carousel, it goes one further, which is the second one. Over here, the slides to scroll. Uh, we're also enabling center mode, which is um, this effect of having two blog posts stick out a little bit, but not be there, but just give that kind of user experience that visitors know that there's something before and after, which is very popular uh, nowadays and I enjoy as well. And over here, we're also um, replacing the back, the previous arrow and the next arrow with the buttons that we've created. So this is really important. We've created uh, variables for those uh, CSS classes. So for those elements over here, and we've replaced it within the code. So. That's why it was really important for us to keep those CSS classes there. And over here, the last part um, handles the uh, breakpoints. So on smaller screen sizes, we obviously want less items to appear because of the viewports. And instead of having three, as you can notice over here, which we have on desktop, we have only one on smaller screen sizes, which definitely uh, improves the user behavior. And then, We'll just save this and I'll exit the visual builder right away so you can see the outcome. Uh, one small side note, you can see the outcome on your page without exiting the visual builder. So I definitely recommend while playing around that you keep one tab open with the eventual outcome of your page um, and one where you can modify things as you go along. And here we have it. If I click on this, it goes to the next one and this one goes to the previous one. You can drag this. Let's take a look at the smaller screen sizes as well. Looks really good. All right, I'm just gonna see if you guys have any questions. That was it for this tutorial. Um, Brian says, I see you are using copy paste of settings that I had not discovered. I will have to read up on that. I, I use copy paste a lot and you can use it uh, throughout different pages on your website. So you're not limited to only one page. You can copy settings from one page to another page, which really helps you save a lot of time. All right? I don't see any questions, but um, yeah. All right. Thank you guys for joining. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, um, make sure that you tune in next week for another use case tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.